We all search for that spark which fuels our desire to fully engage in our lives. We look for the courage to experience moments where we can come alive instead of watching life pass us by. You're listening to The Front Row Factor, leaving fear and insecurity behind by exploring stories of top performers that are living life in the front row. Get ready to stand up, step up, and live it up with your host, John Vroman. Hey, hey, it's John Vroman. and welcome to the Front Row Factor podcast. Today, I'm chatting it up with longtime friend, John Edwin. He's the founder and owner of Strength Personal Training, and he has this awesome gym in Philadelphia. So if you're local, check it out, or you're traveling through, get in there, get a workout in. This guy has done over 30,000 personal training sessions over the past 15 years. And while he has the degrees and the certifications, it's who he is as an individual that makes him so extraordinary. So I could go through how he was named trainer of the year and how he does everything under the sun from training from kettlebells to boxing. But this is a guy who's just an awesome father, husband, friend. He's a man of faith. He's got great energy and passion. On this call today, we talk about how and why health became his passion. We talk about how far can you push someone? And this is a guy who knows the answer to that question. We talk about how he's staged up his business over the years and when to go all in with your dreams. I'm going to take you right now to a part of the interview where I asked John to give me the goods on a little bit of a life breakdown. Enjoy our time with John Edwin. Check him out, strengthphilly.com. Take care, everybody. I grew up in the inner city of Philadelphia and um, loved sports. I was into sports as soon as I could move. And um, I actually have uh, asthma that I was born with and I still have it now. And so it was really important to my parents to get me involved in sports and try and build my strength and my lungs and cardiovascular capacity. And I took to it. It was, it was awesome. And interesting, when I was 15, my parents actually... Uh, split. And that was a hard time in my life. And I went to a new school that I I had been at my old school from kindergarten through ninth. And then in 10th grade, I'm in a new neighborhood in the suburbs Mm -hmm. at a new school. And um, I really focused on continuing in sports. But outside of that, I was I wasn't a happy kid uh, at that point. And what was amazing, you know, something that was very hard in my life, something amazing that came out of it is uh, I started dating a girl when I was 16 and she happened to be a cheerleading captain and I was uh, a football player and um, and we are married today. So we are going on a 21 year relationship this coming April, married for 15, uh, now have three kids, uh, John, Roman, awesome kids, awesome kids. And uh, in high in uh, college, John Roman and I met through uh, Vector. We were selling knives together and uh, we've we've stayed friends ever since. And I went to school for uh, exercise physiology. I graduated uh, with honors and plan on getting my doctorate in physical therapy, which I decided not to pursue. And I was good at sales and understood how to be an entrepreneur. And so I started working with a large company as a sales executive outside of school. And then I really felt that I wasn't making a difference. And that was something that I would wake up every morning with a feeling that I needed to do something better. Mm. And my wife, Christine, suggested that, hey, you're you're really passionate about exercise and personal training and you have a degree and you've got all these things. Why don't you pursue that? So I went and interviewed and... (laughs) The manager of this corporate gym told me that outside of personal training, I would make $8 an hour. I'd be a manager there. And then I would make a small amount as a personal trainer. And I basically walked out the door because I didn't see myself able to um, sustain a career in that. And I took some time to think about it. And I came back a week later and said, I'll take the job. And it's been an amazing ride since. Um, since then, I've been able to um, train over 30,000 hours. Uh, it says it takes 10,000 hours to master something. And right. I've done that three times. I have three kids. I've run- you're a third degree. You have a third degree black belt in training. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Third degree black belt. And um, God is good. Yeah. 
That's awesome, man. That's yeah. so cool. Johnny, I didn't know we, I'm reminded of how much we have in common when you talk about some of this stuff, going through a rough patch early in life. You know, I think that uh, uh, for those of you who, by the way, don't know John Edwin and you haven't gone to strengthacademy.com yet. Strengthphilly.com. Strengthphilly.com. There we go. You've got to, uh, you got a picture. I, John is six foot plus. 200 pounds of pure muscle here. I, I want to say I'm slightly scared doing this interview. I don't want to do the wrong, I don't want to ask the wrong questions, but John is, uh, John's a dedicated human being. Do one of the things I love about you, John, is that you're not only dedicated to your work, but as a family man, you know, a father, uh, a husband, you're a great friend to so many people. One of the things I love about you is that oftentimes you'll, you've said to me in the car driving down, the, we've been talking on the phone in the car and you've said, Hey, is there anything that you want me to, um, anything I can pray about for you today? Uh, you know, and, 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 uh, you oftentimes are acting out of a place of service. And I really love that about you, man. And I love that. Uh, I love being reminded of how long we've been friends and how, how many, how long, how, how incredible the journey has been that, you know, over the past, I don't know how many years that is, but a lot, a lot, a lot of years, man. So it's really cool. Tell us uh, a little bit about where we are today, what's going on in your life. Give us the 60-second brag, man. Give us the, the highlight reel. What are you excited about today? Well, I'm really excited about the direction that Strength Academy is going. We, my, my business partner, Rigel, and myself have been able to surround ourselves with some really elite coaches in our facility. And I've been in and out of a lot of gyms and a lot of fight camps and a lot of different uh, places. And I've never seen the caliber of coaches that we've been able to surround ourselves with in our team. And that that's really, really exciting for me. Also, my wife and I, we just adopted a second dog through a rescue. And that was on New Year's Eve. So uh, it's kind of fun having two dogs and three kids. So I feel... I saw the videos, man. I, They're yeah. playing. They're playing. <laughs> I feel really, really excited and and really grateful for where I am right now. And, um, you know, we're always striving, but but it's good to take some time and actually focus on where where you are in life. Yeah. Johnny, you um, I know that uh, not only in your own personal family, you've had some health scares, but uh, in friends of yours, you, there have been health scares. Uh, in fact, two that come to mind right away. And um, for those of you who are listening who know uh, about Front Row Foundation, a charity that John and I have, have really supported over the years, helps children and adults see the live event of their dreams from the front row, creating this experience for a lifetime. And John, you recommended uh, Sophie back in 2007 for her front row event. In fact, when we were warming up today, John, I should also mention is the first in-person interview. We're in my basement at my home here Woo! in New Jersey. First, power of firsts. But, um, you know, Johnny, we're, we're just looking at the wall yeah. and you saw a picture of Sophie. And um, in fact, we, we just celebrated, you know, we had a party here at the house. Uh, Lauren, Sophie's mom, came and for those of you who don't know, Sophie was a four-year-old who went to go see Kelly Clarkson and had an amazing experience. And sadly, Sophie lost her life shortly after that experience. But um, Lauren, I know, is a close friend of yours and now has become a friend of ours. And uh, you also recommended Johanna Yem, right? Yeah. And, uh, and she went and saw Jason Aldean. <laughs> and you were a big part of that experience. So, dude, can you just for a moment talk about your perspectives around health, you know, and uh, your feelings about health, uh, why it's a passion of yours and how you've seen it show up in, in people's lives as both a, a, a critical area uh, when it was not there and, and, you know, how you help people today with their health. Absolutely. You know, I always say that a healthy body is a healthy mind. And if you think about all these fun things in your life and I want to take a moment, if you're listening, to say, think about what is really enjoyable for you. Maybe it's fishing or um, wh whatever whatever that, that event is. And then think about that moment when you're not feeling well. And that's, that, that takes all the fun out of it. Mm -hmm. So when you're sick, when you're not healthy, it's really hard to have a good time doing anything, even the things that we love. Yeah. And I love helping others get healthy. 
I'll give you a quick example. I have a friend of mine, uh, his name is George, and he was having all kinds of heart problems and physical issues, overweight, and he was in his 40s, which is young. And one day I actually Thank drove, you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> one day I actually drove to his house. He, always, he keeps telling me he's going to train with me and I'm going to help him and do all these great things, but he wouldn't follow through. So I got in my car. He lives in Jersey, not, not far from where we are now. And so I drove 40 minutes to his house. I parked in the driveway. I called him on the phone and told him to show up. <laughs> and he had a, he has a large granite company and I, it's five minutes from his house. I said, I'm, I'm sitting in your driveway. Let's go. And we just started with a walk. We just started walking around the neighborhood and he was on these different heart medications and we'd have to stop. We barely got it around a, a full block. And, um, we started training consistently five days a week. And, uh, every day he just got a little better and a little better. And within a few months, he was off all medications. He was down 25 pounds and, uh, his blood cholesterols were good. His, his blood pressure was good. And it's just really, really exciting to help people get healthy. Mm. Johnny, it brings me to a question I wanted to ask about uh, accountability. And you, in so many ways, provide this high level of accountability through a personal training. And when somebody shows up at a gym, it's a perfect example of the front row factor, right? Like when you're in the gym and you're surround, and your, your environment is filled with people who are exercising, you're more likely to exercise. Absolutely. That's the front row factor, right? Yeah. It's having a great coach around you that says, two more. And I've watched you train people. I've watched people. It's like, they're done. Like in my mind, I'm going, they're done. And you're like, you've got three more reps in you. And you know, they've got three more reps. And I know that comes from that 30,000 hours, right? Of, yeah. of you kind of know, you've felt out how far you can push people. So, uh, you know, listening right now, we've got a lot of people who are entrepreneurs or leaders and managers, parents. And one of the questions I know that comes up all the time is how far can we push people and how much accountability do we provide even when it's not asked for, right? Like they're not showing up. So we drive to their house and park in their driveway and say, it's on, <laughs> you know? And, and in some ways in my life, I've seen that work so well where I didn't ask for accountability. I didn't ask for somebody to push me, but because somebody was, somebody cared about me, they did. You know, but that the, so one side is all the positive stories around somebody pushing you even when you didn't ask for it. But then there's the you know, there's the other side of that, which is people that were turned off because somebody pushed them and they didn't ask for it. You know, you you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make them drink type of deal. And so and we joke like you can take somebody to a concert, but you can't make them sit front row, <laughs> you know, but sometimes you can. You grab their by the hand and you just drag them to the front and they weren't having a good time. And all of a sudden they are because you put them in that environment. Dude, talk about pushing people. Talk about accountability. Talk about how do we know when we can and when we shouldn't. So it's a really fine line in pushing people and accountability, because if you push someone too hard or too far, then they're going to get discouraged. You know, I can't do it. I might as well just give up. So I think you've asked a few questions here and when you hold someone accountable, you did say something that was really important because you care. Mm. And I think that resonates with people. If you're holding someone accountable out of a, out of a position of love, mm. they'll feel that and they'll respond to you. And if they don't, that's really their problem because you, you did it with the right intentions. If you hold someone accountable out of a uh, self-righteous point of view or thinking you're, you're, you're better in some way, then then that's the wrong way to hold people accountable. Like, you know better, and you're going to tell them that you know better rather than meeting them where they are and, like you said, taking them by the hand and helping them. And um, how do I know how far to push someone? In my experience as a personal trainer and in life, there, there's always an end where you think that's the limit, but then there's that little bit more that you can give and if you can learn to give that little bit more each time, that limit that you originally put on yourself, it, it will just, you'll, you'll bust right through it. And the, that original limit will not even be a standard the next, the next time you train. Mm. And I'll give you a quick example. I have a client uh, that I saw yesterday. He's in his 70s and he's strong and he's in great shape and he plays tennis all the time. And he, his dumbbells went up to 50 pounds. And we're doing dumbbell presses on a bench with 50 pounds. And I said, 
it's time to order 55s. He said, I've never done anything more than 50. I said, you're going to do more than 55. You're going to do more than 60. But it's time to get to the next level. Mm. And I worked with him yesterday. And believe it or not, we don't even start with 50s anymore. Mm. A year and a half later, we're starting with 55s. And then we're progressing up to 65, which is something way further than he ever expected. That's cool. Yeah. That's so great. And to do it in your 70s is even better because you're really battling, you know, age and and gravity at that point in time. Yeah. How does somebody know, John, when they need to be in a gym versus like get a workout program going in their house? Like what are the, you know, somebody's going, hey, John, why should I just get myself more disciplined and do some yoga at home by watching a TV show or do some cardio kickboxing, you know, from a TV show? Or, or when do I know I need to go to a gym? Like how, how do you make that call? You know, exercise and health is different for everyone. Everyone is different amount of time that they can take and different times when they can do it. So if using an exercise video at home works for you, that's I'm on board. At least you're getting movement. You're doing something. And some people can be really disciplined and they're able to do that. Most can. Most cannot do that. And that's why we have the obesity epidemic we have in this country. But when you go to a gym, when you take classes in person, when you hire a trainer to work with you, they're going to be able to tailor your program much better than you can yourself. Because that's what we do. I'm not going to sit here and try and say podcast leader. I run a a foundation. That's not my expertise. Mm -hmm. My expertise is in health. So when someone comes up to me and they try and tell me, what they're doing and what they should do, I evaluate where they are and I say, hey, I think this is going to be a lot more efficient for you. Mm, That's cool, man. So, Johnny, talk to us about a uh, back row to front row moment of your life. When did you step up with courage and have a big transformation? So uh, a big transformation for me happened when I was 24. Um, I was reason I got married at 21 and I was turning 22 a week later. And my wife and I, we were just trying to make it. You know, we were just just getting our feet wet, being adults and out of college and trying to be responsible. And uh, and and we we hadn't planned, not that we were unplanning, but we had not planned to have a child at 24. And um, and that that happened. My wife was pregnant. Um, It was a bit of a surprise. She was working full time as an elementary teacher at the time pursuing her master's degree. And, uh, and I was doing very well with the corporate gym in, in training. I was one of the top trainers on the whole East coast out of the entire company of about 2000 trainers. I was ranked either number one, number two, or number three for three years in a row. And, um, we were doing well, but it really, really scared me because we had made a decision that once we started having kids, it would be best for my wife to be at home and, and, and raise our kids rather than someone else. And so when you take on that responsibility, that's a, that's a big responsibility. We had had just bought a house. And so we spent all of our saving on a, on a down payment, which was only 3%, but we didn't have much. So I had a mortgage and I, we we were paying her master's degree in full in cash. We weren't taking loans on that. And yeah, so it was intense. (laughs) And so I decided that it was important for me to just step out and pursue my own business. And in 2004, Strength Personal Training was born. And it was interesting. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know where to go. I didn't, I, I knew nothing about how to get my own facility. So I started walking in facilities and talking to either the owner or the manager and saying, Hey, I have this following. I don't need your members. Tell me what it is that you want to rent so I can just run my business from your, mm. from your gym. And, uh, and I got to take her and, um, I took my entire book of training uh, of, uh, clients, went to this small facility. I wasn't allowed to talk to other members and, um, and yeah. So I was there for about a year and another opportunity opened up for me, which was a small boutique personal training facility in Old City, Philadelphia. It was interesting because there was no way that people could walk by and see my facility. Mm. So I was taking all of my clients, but 
there was no advertising. Right. I never advertised for a long, long time. And everything that came to me was word of mouth. But to get back to your question, it was a very, very scary period of time um, <laughs> for me to step out and just say, I'm doing it. Yeah. But the most amazing thing, John, that I, I found is when you go all in, people mysteriously materialize. Yeah. Opportunities just happen. Yeah. And it was, it's, been, it's been a great ride. Brian Johnson, who's somebody that I appreciate very much, his, uh, he has a, po- a great podcast, Optimize, and he quotes, uh, I think it's Jack Canfield who, who originally said, 99%'s a bitch, 100%'s a breeze. You know, and this idea of when you're all in, sort of a burn the ships mentality that you accomplish so much more. Dude, how do people know? Somebody's listening right now and they're thinking to themselves, how do I know when to go all in, when to say yes, when to like jump, you know, into this new endeavor and just give it all you've got? Do what do you tell somebody? You know, what advice do you give? The first question I would ask is why? Why are you going all in? What is it about whatever you're pursuing that's pulling you towards it? Mm. Because if it's just like, hey, my friend did this. I, it's funny. I had a, I've had a lot of friends that have jumped in and become trainers and not been able to make it mm. because they've seen my success and they thought, hey, he's doing really well. I can do that. And that's that's not a good intention, in my opinion, to do something and go all in. You go all in when you feel passionate about what that is and you're willing to take the risk. I love that that podcast with Brother James when he <laughs> yeah. was saying, I was never a musician, but I knew I wanted to be one and I taught myself yeah. how to do it. That's all in. He had a he had a passion from childhood that this is what he wanted to do. Right. That's a good why. Yeah. Dude, it's uh, the why is so powerful. So why do you do what you do? Why, why train? You know, it's interesting, John. When I was 18 years old, I got serious about my faith. And um, I kind of made it a goal every day at that point that has now just become a habit to make a difference in someone's life every day. Mm-hmm. And I came up with this idea. I was in college one day and I said, you know, I want to do something for someone today. And tomorrow I'm going to do so. And I've been able to continue to replicate that. Personal training for me is something that, first of all, I'm passionate about. I love the human body. I love how it works, the anatomy, the physiology of it. I love helping people. So it was a good, good marriage for me. Um, I love sports. It, it all it all comes together with with what I love. And and you had posted a question I remember on another podcast that, you know, if you had a million, a billion, a trillion, whatever, if you had the amount of money that you needed the rest of your life, what would you do? And I'm doing that. Yeah. How's that feel? Fantastic. (laughs) I love it. That's so cool. All right. Cross that question off the list today. John, dude, this is so great. And I wish uh, I wish people could see you. I wish we were videotaping this because it's not only that you just say say things with such enthusiasm, but it's written all over your face. It's like it, it's it's in your body, dude, that this is what you were born to do. Dude, we did a we did a tough mutter together. <laughs> and that was awesome, man. It was you, awesome. You uh, you rallied a team and uh, you brought everybody together and you weren't being paid to do it. You just wanted to do this. And but it was great, dude. Even on that, even on that day, you were a great leader. You know, you were encouraging people. You were, dude, you were giving me coaching on my running, you know, <laughs> stride during <laughs> during the race, right? And yeah. dude, I just watched you fight through that. I watched you tackle every challenge. And uh I I just knew, man, this was a space where you lead and it's great to be around you in in that way to give people a background on that tough mutter it was really cold it was about super cold 45 degrees i'm going to say at the start and we were on a racetrack so the wind if you can imagine a flat massive amount of space 
at 20, 20 mile an hour gusts. It was crazy. And we were wet and we were cold <laughs> and we got through it. Yeah, it was <laughs> awesome, man. Certainly a day I will never forget. Yeah. So, Johnny, there's, you know, when we talk about the front row factor, we talk about three things making a difference in someone's life. And so one is the immediate, we'll, we'll call this the personal part of the front row factor, which is the mind, body, and spirit. You know, if the thoughts that you keep in your mind are powerful, if they're front row thoughts, that you are, you're, you're going to be positively impacted by that. You know, if your body you know, the body that you're in, that you have a front row seat to your body, no doubt. Your body has a front row seat to your life. You're, this, you know, as you know, the front row is all about proximity. It's all about what you're close to, right? So, you know, and, and then with our spirit being the third part of that as the person, you know, the, the, the spirit which we bring to something, the spirit that we're connected to, spirituality or your soul, however you want to define that, kind of categorize that. Dude, you know, what do you do to keep these three areas of your life in tune. I know that you exercise regularly. That's a given, but maybe talk a little bit about your mind, your men the mental game. How do you stay strong in that area? And how do you stay strong spiritually? Yeah. The, the mental part of what you're pursuing is, in my opinion, the most important. Because when your body feels pain and everybody has a different spectrum there, you can always take it a lot further if your mind is strong enough. And it's interesting that a lot of people, they want something, but they're not willing to educate themselves and, and sharpen their mind towards whatever that subject is. So, for example, every day or almost every single day, I take time and I listen to some success story. Something that someone has put out there. I listen to these podcasts all the time. I'm always on YouTube looking up different motivational speeches, uh, reading about people. And every day I try and take some steps to continuing to keep my mind sharp. Like, for example, I have a, almost an hour commute in to my gym every day and almost an hour commute out. There's a couple things I do. One, I call close friends and I always talk to them, catch up. But you said like proximity is powerful. A lot of the people around me are very powerful human beings. Mm -hmm. And so we inspire one another. We, as the Bible says, as iron sharpens iron, one brother does another. So I'm constantly being sharpened and challenged through my relationships. The other thing is I turn my vehicle kind of into a, a learning center. So whatever it is that I'm interested in, and one of them is continuing to be a positive role model to everyone in my life. So maybe I'll turn on Tony Robbins. Maybe I'll turn on Zig Ziglar. Maybe I'll turn on John Vroman. Maybe, you know, there's something that I listen to every single day that keeps me sharp. Mm. Dude, I like that. I'm going to start call, I'm going to start referring to my car as my learning center. <laughs> I'm going to go jump into my learning center. That's right. Dude, that's so great. That's really perfect. How about people in your world? You know, the second part of the front row factor is all about who's in your front row and whose front row are you in? So who cheers you on, man? Who's your greatest fan? Yeah, so my wife, Christine, she is, before we started this podcast, John said some very, very kind things about her. But it's funny, I <laughs> I tell people all the time, they people really like me when they meet me until they meet my wife. And then they're like, she's way better. <laughs> so... <laughs> So to, you know, to, to spend my time and my days with her and her being my best friend has really made a great impact on my life. Mm, it's awesome. Dude, you're, you're allowed to cry. <laughs> we got some tears here, ladies and gentlemen. We did it. We brought tears to the Front Row Factor podcast. I hate you, John. Hey, I, I wish. Uh, <laughs> hey, listen, I, I know that every... Every person listening right now appreciates that uh, authenticity, brother, you know, and talking about your your amazing wife yeah. um, and the emotion that that brings up for you. I think it's really great. Who, who has been most influential in your business world? Who's been one of your great mentors or coaches in helping you get your business going? That's a great question. 
I don't know that anyone specifically has. When I got my start, a good friend of mine now, we've been friends for 15 years, I sought out the best trainer on the East Coast as soon as I started because I'm really big on mirroring, right? Mm. If you want to do anything great in your life, if you if you want to be mediocre, that's easy. I mean, that's that. just go through the motions, mm. look at the clock for eight hours, clock in, clock out. But if you want to be great at a profession, you need to seek out the best in the business or some of the best. And a very good friend of mine, Clayton, when I first became a trainer, I just sat around for weeks and watched him train clients. I watched him interact. And then I created my own identity. I didn't take his identity, but I understood how it worked. Mm. And then I took off. And, and Clayton, it's interesting. I was the first one to start. We, we had a really good core of trainers at the gym I was at. And I was the first one to branch out and start my own business. And then he followed maybe a year or two later to start his own outside of that. And just three months ago, he came to Strength Academy and has now brought his clients to my gym. So awesome. I want to say if Clayton's listening... Uh, the student has become the, the master, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I love it. Johnny, talk a little bit about environment. And I think this is so perfect for you, too, be, because not only this is the third part of the front row factor, which is what's in our front row, right? What are we surrounding ourselves with? And the gym is a perfect example of how I know when I go to the gym, I'm much more likely to uh, continue my workout then if I do come down to my basement and I start doing some push-ups or sit-ups, it's easy for me to bail. But if I've driven eight minutes to the gym and I get in there, I'm going to do an hour workout most likely, you know, because I'm surrounded by people that are doing the same thing. Environment, uh, you know, the, the rising tide lifts all ships. Dude, talk to me about environment and how you've seen this be powerful in your life, maybe your clients' lives. How do you shape your environment at home or maybe perhaps at the office? I know that or at the gym. I know that's a big question, open ended, lots of places to go. I could be more specific if needed. But yeah, you know, your environment, your 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 friends are like elevators. They're going to take you up and down and who you surround yourself with is who you will become. Like you said, John, when you when you go to the gym, like at my gym, it's it's very, very different. I know you've been through it. But when you come to our facility at Strength Academy, there's nobody reading a book on a bike. And if that happens, we will slap them right off. <laughs> because <laughs> we're, we're, awesome. we're there to work. You know, I've had people come in and say this or say that. I say, listen, we are the antithesis of Planet Fitness. We are not that. Mm. And so, you know, we're here to work hard. And there are days that even me as a trainer, I don't want to do anything. I'm just sitting there. I'm through training my clients. I'm like, I marked off this time to work out myself. And man... I just don't want to. And I'll look up and I'll see one of the members or one of my staff just training their ass off. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And I'll get up and I'll do it. And it's and it's really motivating. So surrounding yourself and in different places in your life, you know, at home, one of one of the great things I love to that I do um, in my house at dinner, we, we go around the table and we do yays and nays and mm -hmm. different people call it different things. We've done this forever for 10 years. Our oldest is 12 now, but as soon as he could start to put things together, we started that. And uh, and the yays are just great things that happen in the day. And the nays are things that weren't the best. And we just go around the table and, and each person gives their yay and nay. And there are no generic answers. You, If you give a generic answer, you... You're you will out. continue to get a spotlight <laughs> until you, until you, yeah, right. until you give something that was specific oh, and tangible. Cool. And, you know, you can't just say, uh, my whole day was a yay, which happens sometimes, but, yeah. you know, okay, well, what was it about that? And I loved what Larry said. Uh, one of the things was, you know, ask your kids the three funniest things. Mm. that happened that day. Larry Hagner, Good Dad Project. Check yeah. it out if you haven't heard it yet. Great podcast. And um, and I got some really, really good information that I've already put into practice from that. Mm. But, you know, that's the environment. You know, we're, we're at dinner. We have music playing. You know, our kids are now old enough, 12, 9, and 7. They have all their little devices. Everything goes away. We're going to put all that stuff, the TV's off, and and we're just gonna we're just going to take some time. Dude, I love it. 
Johnny, what in your in all your experience over the years training people, what stands in the way of somebody having a physical transformation? I mean, I guess I don't have to limit it to physically. It could be a mental transformation that leads to a physical transformation. But what have you seen stand in the way most often of people transforming their health themselves? Mm-hmm. You know, there's a powerful quote that your greatest opponent is is looking back at you in the mirror mm. themselves. It's the self-limiting things that kind of go on in your mind because as you probably know, I mean, you're an ultra distance runner. I, I can't ever imagine running 45 miles. I'm not built for that, by the way. You don't see me, but I'm not built to run 45 miles. But, you know, if, if you're out running, it's easy to come up with excuses like, I plan on running 45 miles today, but I started 15 minutes late or I started 20 minutes late and I really need that time back. It's those self-limiting excuses Mm. that you put into whatever it is. See, we just came through the new year and already 40% of people have bailed on their resolutions. By the end of the month, I think it's up to 80%. Mm. I don't have statistics in front of me, but it's high. And everyone has good intentions and good intentions will only get you so far. If you don't actually write that stuff down, I'm looking around John's office here and there is stuff everywhere. And when <laughs> when he went to get us water, I took pictures with my cell phone all over his office of all this, all these great things that he has written down of accomplishments and where he's going to go. He has his life planned up to like 2018. <laughs> Um, it's, it's really cool. But if you don't have these strong reminders Mm -hmm. and also accountability partners are great for it. Accountability partners. Yeah. You know, if if you don't have all this stuff around you, if you haven't really, really made that commitment, you know, you're, you're your worst enemy. Yeah, that's so true. When I went to, uh, Tony Robbins date with destiny back, you know, years and years and years ago, one of the most powerful parts of that was where he talks about limiting beliefs and identifying what beliefs have been holding you back. And one of mine was that I wasn't good at reading, you know, and that I just didn't read because I had this belief that I didn't like it. I wasn't good at it. It wasn't me until I smashed that belief at his event, went home and read like a hundred books in the next year. And that transformed my life because I let go of a belief. It's amazing how Right now, listening on this podcast, there are people who have beliefs about who they are, their identity, that are totally false, and that they are running their life, you know, and that at any moment, it's not about being fake. And like, all of a sudden, when you have a transformation, I think some people are worried that they're going to look fake to their friends, because all of a sudden, they have this shift. They were this way, and now they're this other way. And so they almost don't want to change, because they're like, I am who I am. And they believe in being authentic. But the truth is that who they thought they've been is not really truly who they are. It's a, it's a belief. It's just an identity that can be shed, you know, at any moment. And that uh, right now, today, somebody could shed that old identity for a new one. I, I love that you brought that up, because not only can some people hurt themselves, but their close influences can be very critical and shut them down. And I'll give you, I'll give you a great example of that. There was a guy when I was probably two or three years into being a personal trainer, I really looked up to him. He had a very successful business and kind of took me under his wing as almost a mentor in life. And I was 23 years old at the time. And, you know, he's an, he's a very well-established older, older gentleman. And um, we were out at lunch and he said to me, you know, John, you can do this in your 20s, but no one's going to take you seriously in your 30s. So have fun now. But, you know, this isn't being a trainer can't be lasting to you or, you know, and I was hurt by that. Mm-hmm. I was really kind of put off. And and I thought to myself, man, that that didn't feel good to hear that. But I believe in myself and I've always been able to do that. And it's funny, the next year when I started my own business, just as a personal trainer with nothing else, I I made over six figures doing what I loved. Mm -hmm. So if you are engaged and passionate about what you want to do, don't let anybody squash that idea. Uh, Another quick example is when you start doing stuff, that's amazing. 
your light will shine and you're giving others the opportunity to say, hey, he did that. I can do that too. Mm. So great. Jenny, where did that belief come from for you? Like, where did you develop a strong belief in yourself? Can you identify it? Can you go back to moments in your life? Was it something your parents did? Was it a mentor? Was it a, a God given, you know, hey, here's some belief. And uh, you've got, you know, did it come from sports? And, uh, it, you know, maybe identify yours and then also comment about how people can generate more belief in themselves, you know, is it having to let go of beliefs or is it having to get something called belief? Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. I have a good level of self-confidence and John, you beautiful blue eyes. I know you, uh, you do too. Um, <laughs> oh, but, thanks, but even you and I still have doubts and self doubts. It's kind of something that we're, we're, we're evolving mentally to overcome. It really started when I was young, right. you know, both of my parents were incredible about always telling me, you know, I can look back and I can say they did this wrong, they did that wrong and whatever. You can always do that, right? But my parents always said, John, you can do anything you put your mind to, anything. And when you grow up hearing that, it really actually shapes your life. It really helps. And even though life and experiences and different things can get in the way and make you feel like, well, I really can't do that. You can always come back to it. And and you can. I mean, I've done things that I never thought I could do. And, uh, and a lot of it comes back to hearing that as a child, mm. that you can do it. That's so awesome. And so if you've heard else, if you've heard something else from your parents, if they've doubted you or downed you or whatever in any way, know that you're much more powerful than you think you are and you can do it. So John, do you have a personal mantra? Impacting others. Mm. Every day in different ways, my goal is to help others. And it, and it takes me to a quote from Lewis Katz, who was a very successful businessman in Philadelphia, philanthropist, unfortunately, his life was cut short in a um, in an airplane accident. I want to say two years ago. I have friends that uh, were very close to him, and uh, actually, one of one of my very close friends was supposed to be on that private jet with him that day and had had a meeting and and didn't go. But Lewis Katz has a quote, and I'm I don't have it in front of me, so it might be paraphrased. But he says it was. It's never a perfect day unless you help someone that can never repay you. Mm. That's great, man. Johnny, on that topic of uh, life being cut short, how do you process death and, uh, you know, th th this ride, you know, may end for any one of us on any given day? Living every day to the fullest. And that, that can be cliche because a lot of people say it. And you're not going to live every day to the fullest. Let's be honest with each other, but at least having that intention because it's, you know, and I actually put this quote up the other day. It's, it's not the duration of your life. Uh, Rick Warren said it. It's not the duration of your life. It's the donation of it. Mm. So really the, the, the quantity of your life isn't something, isn't something I focus on. It's the quality and making a difference and in every every conversation, every interaction with somebody to try and help them to have a better day. Mm. What's one of the nicest things anybody's ever done for you? You know, I've been really fortunate. I have had some amazing things that have happened unexpectedly in my life. Recently, I can tell you that I hadn't seen this couple I used to train, I haven't seen them for uh, years, six years. And they were back in Philadelphia. They had moved to the South and um, with, with their business. And um, we were, my wife and I were out to dinner with them. And they said, hey, we have a flat in London that we don't use all the time. And by the end of this year, the company that we're with is going to take it back because I'm retiring. And it just so happened that my wife and I were celebrating our 15 year wedding anniversary 
in the fall. This is this is in the spring of 2015. And uh, and this isn't just like an ordinary flat. This is like a really expensive, ritzy flat. And, you know, for them to offer that up and at first I kind of blew it off and they were like, no, seriously, take it. So in the in the fall, Christine and I got to go to London for eight days and stay at this amazing flat. And um, I'm not sure that that's the nicest thing that's ever happened, but that's pretty nice. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how you say, you know, m- m- more recently, here's one that comes to mind, because sometimes it's overwhelming to think about in our entire lives, like what in our entire life, what's the nicest thing? That's so difficult because yeah. you're pulling from thousands of, uh, you know, examples. So, yeah, it's good. Go with, go with your heart. Johnny, we're running out of time. So a couple of final questions here for you. What's something, one thing that, you know, anybody listening today to this show, and by the way, thank you for listening to this show. Thanks for being with John and I. Um, we love you, right, John? Absolutely. We love, we love you. you. What's one thing that listeners can do in the next 24 hours to live life in the front row? Look at themselves in the mirror and smile and know that they're going to have a great day and then go live it. Mm. Go make a difference. Go do something for someone that can't repay you. Whether that be taking someone out to lunch that might be recently divorced or lost someone in their life. Whether that is, you know, seeing a friend or how about this? Maybe it's calling somebody that did did help hurt you in some way. And telling them that they're forgiven. Mm, I love that. Uh, what dream are you chasing right now, Johnny, that maybe our front row community can help you with? I am. So a little over a year ago, we just celebrated our one year anniversary at Strength Academy. Uh, prior to Strength Academy, I strictly ran a personal training business called Strength Personal Training. So if you've heard that in here, Strength Academy is a larger umbrella now with a lot of staff and I have a great business partner, but we just celebrated our one year and we kind of, we took a business that was in the red and, uh, and now we're starting to get into the black. So something I'm really, really focused on, something I'm really driven is, is growth Mm. in our business now. So if you live in Philly, where do they go? If you live in Philly, you have to come visit us. Strength Academy, we're located in the Piazza in the Northern Liberties section of the city, which is just north of Old City, just outside of Center City. It's a beautiful space and uh, we'd love to have you. And if you're if you're a traveler, if you're a businessman or woman and you uh, get out and travel and you and you end up in Philadelphia, send me an email. Uh, we'll go down and we'll meet up at John's gym and we'll uh, we'll, tra- we'll all train together. Yeah, that'd gonna, be fun. We're going to work hard. We'll have a podcast, uh, you know, uh, meetup group at your uh, at your gym. Yeah, that's a challenge to everybody listening right now. Johnny, uh, so let's do this rapid fire. I want to I have to come up with some clever name for this section. I have. Come, haven't, had it, haven't f- figured it out yet, but this is one word or one sentence answers. So gut reaction. All right. Uh, here we go. Excluding present company. <laughs> when you think of somebody who lives life in the front row, who's the first person that comes to mind? John Cain. John Cain. If you had to live for one year with only three things outside of food, water, shelter, people you love, what physical items or luxuries would you want to have the most with you? My toothbrush. <laughs> Way to go practical. A shower. All right. <laughs> and a soccer ball. Dude, very simple man right here, ladies and gentlemen. Very simple man. What does it mean to be fully alive? Being healthy. Being healthy. Nice. Who are you a raving fan of? Mother Teresa. What's the next place that you most want to travel to? Israel. What are the three things top of mind right now you're most grateful for? My wife, you, and my children. Dude, I got, I got roped into that group. Woohoo! What's the first happiest memory that you can recall in life? This is really weird. I used to love having a bottle when I was a kid. And my parents had a hard time getting that away from me. <laughs> and somebody stole all my bottles that were in a thing that a toy I remember on the front porch. Maybe my parents hired them to steal it. 
but that was the last day of my bottles. But <laughs> I do remember <laughs> I was a little kid, and I love that. Oh, all right, Johnny. What is something fun you've collected in your lifetime? T-shirts. What's your favorite T-shirt? I right here. The one he's wearing. The now. one I'm wearing. The new front row shirt. Best day of my life. Best day of my life. I love it. All right, uh, and final question: If you could be front row to any event that you can currently go see so no bands or groups that no longer play but like any event live performance uh what's on the dreams list you too you too nice dude i've been front row at you too and it's a little crazy down there <laughs> it's a little nuts one day I oh uh, that's awesome we did go see you two together didn't we at one point no nope. no okay all right well we will go see you two together what band am i thinking dude what concert did we go to i feel like i've been to a show with you we might have been i did remember. we play Bago in the in the <laughs> parking lot? I don't know. Maybe we had too many beers. Who knows? It'll come to mind. When it hits us, we'll come back to it. Johnny, where can people go find your stuff? Where can they go find you online? Strengthphilly.com. Strengthphilly.com. Any final words, comments, anything we didn't cover today that you want to say? I want to say if you're listening, believe in yourself and help others. Awesome. Johnny, I want to tell you, man, that uh, I'm so grateful for you. Thanks for carving out the time today and sharing your gifts with the Front Row community. Dude, you are a pillar in the Front Row community. And I want to say this to you, but in front of everybody that's listening, and that is that uh, you from day one have been a huge supporter of the Front Row Foundation from literally day one, literally. You know, all of our fundraisers throughout the years, you've been an active participant, you've donated your services, you've you've spent your money, you've donated, uh, you know, to the cause in almost every way imaginable. You've helped facilitate events, and you're just a huge part of the Front Row community. Um, you're such a quality dude, man. I, you know, I you're somebody that I hope my kids, my boys, watch in their life. You know, I hope that they have your influence. I love when you're around and they get to see how you work with your boys and the nice things you say to my kids. And when you walked into my house today, dude, one of the first things you did was you walked up and you, you know, you you said hello to my mother-in-law. You went up to my, my youngest and uh, you engaged. You're such a people guy. And I know that that's why you're doing so well in life. And I think that you've, you know, there's no way to count your contributions to the world, but you're just a great human. And thanks for making a difference, you know, in the world. You're shaping a place, you're shaping the environment that my kids are growing up in because of your influence. So thank you for that. Thank you for the kind words, John. Yeah, man. Well, love you, buddy. Uh, we'll do this again sometime down the road. Look forward to it. All right, man. Adios. Thanks again for listening to the show. I hope you enjoyed our chat with John Edwin. You can find out more at Strength philly.com. If you live in the area or you're passing through the area, hit me up. Maybe we'll go work out with John himself and get a personal training session. I also want to invite everybody to go to frontrowfactor.com. On that site, we got all things front row related from the charity to the podcast. And even you can sign up for our four minutes in the front row weekly video email. These have been getting a lot of positive feedback and we want to offer more value to you to help you have your best year ever. We also want to invite you to join the Front Row community online. You can get there the easiest way by going to frontrowfriends.com, jump into the conversation, share ideas, ask for support, maybe find an accountability partner. We just launched the Front Row 30-Day Challenge. This is a great spot to meet with like-minded people and elevate your world. Until next time, keep living life in the front row. We'll catch you on the next show. See ya. That's all for this episode of The Front Row Factor. To discover more simple and effective ways to lead a fearless front row life, please visit frontrowfactor.com and subscribe to John's Four Minutes in the Front Row, where he shares quick stories from real-life experiences. Thanks again for joining us today. We hope our show inspires you to live big, give big, and experience life to the fullest. See you next time on The Front Row Factor.